Ladies and gentlemen, we are now heading towards the German part of our morning session. And the situation regarding the empirical evidence is a special one in Germany. We do not have good empirical evidence. There is no doubt that everything is practiced in Germany, hidden or not, legally or illegally, in a gray area or openly. But unfortunately, we do not have national surveys. But there are a few scientists, I'm tempted to say a few lonesome scientists, who want to compensate this lack of evidence. And two of them are among us. The first one is Ralf Jox. He is a physician and philosopher. He is a physician of palliative care and a neurologist. He is currently an assistant professor at the Med Institute of Medical Ethics at the University of Munich. And, Ralf, we are interested to know what we do know about patients and citizens' pers perspectives on assisted suicide in Germany. Ralf, the floor is yours. Thank you, Urban, for this nice introduction. Um, so the next uh, two presentations will be on the German situation and in fact we do not know as much, we do not have as much good empirical studies as uh, there are in Oregon, in Washington, in uh, Switzerland or Netherlands, Belgium, but we have some studies and I'd like to present the perspective uh, of patients, family members and citizens and uh, the next speaker, Jan Schildmann, will focus on the physician's perspective. So what I will do is summarize um, the few studies that exist um, about patients and relatives' uh, perspectives, and then I'll come to the public opinion polls that actually are quite uh, frequent and frequently mentioned in Germany, especially uh, during the last two years. Um, and very cautiously I try to uh, make some conclusions for the current German debate about political regulation of assisted suicide. Some introductory remarks um, before uh, the studies on patients and family uh, perspectives. End of life decisions, um, I think we've seen that, uh, affect the society in general. They affect family members, they affect physicians, healthcare professionals, chaplains, they affect all of us, but most existentially, of course, they affect the patient. The patient or the person who is going uh, to die or is going to use that uh, method of dying. And the patient's perspective, I think, has to be taken into account, especially uh, if Parliament wants to regulate on this issue. I think that's, that's a very key uh, problem, and in uh, many cases the patients cannot uh, make themselves known or, or you know, talk themselves, so it's very important to give, uh, to give this voice, to present this voice in the debate. And another issue is that the patient's individual perspectives um, are not necessarily represented by patient organizations. Um, this is the case because some patient organizations only focus on a specific disease, for example, or a certain uh, period of time, um, and of course they cannot ask all of, of the patients uh, um, what about, about their opinions and their perspectives. Another problem is using single cases um, in the public debate. Um, especially in the German debates, there have been uh, single cases of famous people or less famous people. Um, and it's always uh, the risk of giving or setting a bias in the public debate. So I think we need, in addition to single cases, to uh, patient organizations, to clinician experiences, we need research. We need empirical research on the perspectives of patients, family members. What I've already said is that most studies um, stem from the USA, from uh, Benelux countries and Switzerland, and in Germany the studies that exist focus mainly on two um, kinds of diseases. The first one is cancer patients, and we've seen that cancer patients is uh, probably the largest group uh, in these other countries as well. And the second one is a very uh, small group of patients, but with a very well-known disease, um, 
amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also called motor neuron disease. And I'll show you one study that we, we've conducted ourselves. Um, the desire for hastening or hastened death, um, that's actually a term that is uh, very frequently uh, used in this discussion. It's um, the wish to die prior to your natural moment of death. Um, and so it kind of combines to die, the wish to die by assisted suicide or the wish to die by um, what is called euthanasia or termination of life on request. And this desire for hastened death is a state of mind that has been uh, shown um, by a German group um, quite recently that is distinct from depression, distinct from anxiety and physical suffering. And there's even uh, a validated instrument um, how you can measure this desire for hastened death. It's called Schedule of Attitudes Towards Hastened Death. Um, it uh, was original in the US and it was now translated and validated in German. Now we're coming to the interesting point about the frequency of desire for hastened death in German patients. And um, I found uh, three studies uh, that looked at the, or studied the frequency of the current actual desire for hastened death in terminally ill German patients, cancer patients or ALS patients. And in all of these studies, it ranged between 20 and 29% of these patient groups. So it's, uh, it's not uh, negligible. It's, there, there are some patients. Um, one study uh, by a group in Ulm, a neurology uh, group, showed that one third of ALS patients already sought information about hastening death when they asked them um, about uh, their perspectives. The desire to hasten death also uh, is expressed by patients who are being treated in palliative care settings. Um, that's something that has been found in uh, various studies. We found it in the ALS study. Um, I will show you the data later. Um, but it was also found in patients treated in palliative care units, cancer patients, um, um, and um, even um, 10 years ago by Van Orschert uh, found this. And um, another area to look at the frequency of the desire for hastened death is to ask the physicians whether they have been confronted with patient wishes, patient requests. And here we have uh, one very influential um, physician poll, a representative poll of physicians um, a survey that has been done by the Allensbach uh, Survey Institute in 2009, actually commissioned by the German Federal Medical Council. Um, and in this survey, about a third of all physicians in Germany said they have been asked at least once uh, about the desire for hastened death or by a patient um, who had the desire for hastened death. And actually 50% of the primary care physicians, the general practitioners. Um, this slide has already been showed, or the data have already been showed, about uh, patients going to Switzerland. And I just want to, uh, to emphasize this once more. Um, the fact that a lot of Germans go to Switzerland. We have like uh, 268 uh, German citizens going to Switzerland for assisted suicide in a five-year period. Um, this fact underlines um, the problem that we, that we have patients uh, with this um, desire for hastened death. Now, what are the determinants of the desire for hastened death? And we've seen uh, the data from Oregon and from the Netherlands and Belgium, and it's uh, quite similar in the few studies we have from Germany. It is not uh, physical disability. Um, these are studies, um, mainly interview studies, uh, interviewing patients. It was not the burden of symptoms, pain and other symptoms, the age, the social support, the country of residence. There was one study comparing Germany and uh, Switzerland. But it was mainly um, the feeling to be a burden to others, loneliness and low rel religiosity. Um, and 
there are conflicting results. One study saying that depression, anxiety, and quality, low quality of life is or are determinants of the wish to hasten death. Another study um, showing different results, so this is a bit unclear. It may also depend on the group that has been asked and uh, the methodological issues. The motifs according to a qualitative interview study um, that, have, uh, that has interviewed patients on palliative care units was published quite recently by a palliative care group, um, uh, Pesting and others, have showed uh, three or four main themes um, that are relevant. The first one is self-determination, autonomy, the wish for control, we've heard that already, but also uh, the wish to, to relieve and disburden relatives from their decision. The second theme was the fear of future symptoms, future suffering, dependency, um, agony, uh, lingering uh, for several years in a dependent state. The third theme was the wish to, um, or the feeling that there's a certain time, a certain moment in time when it's right to die. It's the right moment uh, for death to come. And the last one was um, longing for a certainty uh, about a, lot, a last resort. Um, so a lot of these patients said they just want to be sure to have an option in case it, uh, it will um, it will worsen, the situation will worsen. Um, now, how stable is this wish for hastened death? There are two studies. One, um, that I've shown you here, um, looked at um, three time points, one and then six months later and 12 months later in ALS patients, and they found a little bit of decrease um, um, the number of patients with this wish decreased a little bit um, over the first six months. Um, and in the study we did on um, asking ALS patients, um, we found that it was quite stable over one year. We were asking patients, can you imagine asking a physician for a prescription to commit suicide? These were, um, here you see 66 um, LS patients, and we had 50%, half of them, who were answering yes. Um, and um, 12 months later, um, only 38 were still alive, but almost half of them, 45%, were still answering yes. Um, and uh, kind of the same was when we asked about, can you imagine uh, asking a physician to administer a lethal medication, termination of life on request, we had exactly the same data, uh, same answers on this question. Um, now, what do we know about family and caregivers? We know that family caregivers of ALS patients evaluated patients' desire for death similar to the patient. There was no significant difference. Um, and in our own study, one third of family caregivers said they could imagine actually helping their patient in hastening death. We didn't ask whether it, um, or there was, there's no study looking actually at, at the practice of, of health, but that was the, the perspective of family members. And a very interesting question um, was to the patient when he asked, have you ever talked about someone about the option to hasten death? And we found that two thirds said yes, this was, um, a topic of, of discussion, we talked about that. Um, but you will see here um, that only one talked with a physician about this question. And actually this physician was, was a friend of, of the family. Um, all of the others um, chose family members um, to talk about this, family members, friends, um, or maybe other patients. And then we were asking, would you like to talk to a physician about the option to hasten death. Um, and interestingly, um, there is a group of 30% of patients who would like to talk uh, with the physician about this, but obviously um, there's a certain taboo or they don't dare to, uh, to communicate this wish. Um, and another group um, seems to be more like the private, um, intimate, uh, intimacy uh, searching group that, that, that you presented in Switzerland. 
Now I'm coming to the, uh, the public opinion polls, um, just uh, uh, to sh quickly mention. The end-of-life issues attract high intention, attention in the public. Um, we've seen it in meetings, talks, media publications. And of course, it touches on core values of our society. Um, so this means that democratic principles, I think, demand a fair public and parliamentary debate before the regulation. And this also includes, of course, it does include public opinion polls as a legitimate part of this debate. The question is how to use it. That's, of course, a problem because some of the polls are subject to biases uh, depending on their methodology, depending on um, who they ask, um, and, of course, the formulation, um, the wording. Now, these are the public opinion polls that have been done in Germany over the last uh, about uh, two years, or almost two years. Here's April 2015, um, and starting from September 2012, that I could find at least. Um, and you see that all of these are um, respected institutes of uh, public survey, public opinion institutes. And this is um, the percentage of citizens who were in favor of either assisted suicide or um, both assisted suicide and uh, uh, sort of general assistance in dying or aid in dying. Um, as the formulations were different here, for example, physician assisted suicide assisted suicide, um, aid in dying, active aid in dying, it's a special word in Germany. Um, but you see that in all of these polls, at least 50% of the population voted in favor of it. Um, and that's interesting, even if you look at the difference, there are three uh, polls that have been commissioned by the church, uh, evangelical church or a group near to the Catholic church. Um, they're a bit lower and they are um, uh, surveys or polls that have been commissioned by the um, RRD, like a state TV with a tendency to the political left. These are the higher ones, as you see here. Um, so it kind of ranges a bit between 50% and 80%. Um, the, the mean is 71%. 71% of the population is in favor of this um, sort of aid and die. Now, of course, it, the questions that are phrased are different according to um, also whether the physician is involved, whether um, there, are, there should be conditions, safeguards, um, for example, about terminal illness, um, and whether they ask about a hypothetical situation concerning yourself as, as a citizen or just about your general attitude. Um, that's different. Interestingly, um, consistent, consistently higher support rates among Eastern Germans, less religious, um, citizens with a higher education, we've also heard that from Oregon, and younger or middle-aged um, persons. Um, and this is known from a European value study, is consistent. And there's one study that, have, that has showed in Germany that 75%, so roughly the same um, uh, group, of bereaved relatives of cancer patients is in favor of physician or assisted suicide. So you could think it's less, um, but it's roughly the same as the public opinion polls show. I'm concluding uh, with a few conclusions, desire to hasten death is a situation and personality dependent feature of terminal illness. It's also occurring in Germany. It occurs also in a palliative care setting, um, which has been shown even by palliative care people. Underlying problems and motives are not all amenable to palliative care. This is why it also occurs there. Um, the communication about the desire to hasten death seems to be uh, rather a taboo in Germany, in the physician-patient encounter at least. Um, and the legal prohibition of organized assisted suicide, which is um, contemplated in Germany, um, would probably not change the desire for hastened death in the patients, um, but might increase the taboo, may lead to violent suicide, suicide tourism, hidden assisted suicide, 
and is contrary at least to the stable and vast majority um, of public opinion as far as assessed in opinion polls. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph, for informing, about, informing us about uh, patients' and citizens' perspectives on assisted suicide. We have time for a few questions. Please. Um, I would like to clarify one point, Ralph. Uh, you said, uh, uh, you quoted the study from Marin Galushko and said there are 20% of patients terminal ill patients, patients in a palliative care unit with a de desire for hastened death, and you equal that to a request for some kind of uh, assisted dying. Most of these patients, yes, had a de desire for hastened death, but they, this group was just saying, for me it's okay if the, the uh, disease progresses more fast than, uh, 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 than it is proposed. And only very few of them had a uh, request for assisted dying or uh, uh, euthanasia. So there, there is a vast difference between um, the desire for hasten yeah. death and a request. So yeah. I think this is a very yeah, that, that, important clar thank you. clarification. The same is true for our Munich study. So the desire for hasten death does not mean that, that the patient actually requests help from the physician, um, but uh, this state of mind is there. So the, the idea or the thought about hastening death is in the, uh, in the minds of, of patients. Are there any further questions? Yes, please. Would you be so kind and give her the preference? Bettina, möchtest du sofort dran? <laughs> Sekundärer Krankheitsgewinn, bitte schön. <laughs> yeah, it was on purpose for this occasion. Okay. Okay. Um, Bettina Schöne Seifert, just an add on comment on the last question or comment. Uh, I really think one, one should qualify DHD in terminology a bit more, although it obviously has been established in your mm. recent years. What you test for, and many of what these studies that you report about test for, is a potential desire to, to hasten death. Because one of the indicators was that, uh, and one of the motives, that these patients uh, want to have certainty that in case, blah, blah, blah. So a potential DHD is, I think, the, the best expression for that. Thanks. Yes. Final question. Well, um, first point, uh, DHD, could, uh, does this include patients who say, um, okay, hastening death would mean to withdraw treatment? Because I think that pers uh, the, the question is, what do the people think if you ask them? And that's the main problem also about the general opinion polls. If you ask people, like has done, pro uh, for example, by Emlet, do you uh, think the doctor should be actively be engaged in the dying of the patient? And then the result is people want the doctor to kill their patient. That's simply wrong, because one does not mean the other. And I think if you ask people, do you have a desire to hasten death, a lot of people would say, well, yes, I have, because I want to treatment to withdraw, be withdrawn. I think um, it could include that in the mind of the person you are asking, and how do you uh, know for certain that the people who say, I have a desire to hasten death, do not mean that, but mean assisted suicide or uh, killing on demand. Thank you very much. Um, in, in, well, in some of the opinion polls, you're right that um, the questions are phrased very vaguely um, uh, and uh, maybe even in the way, do you have a desire to hasten death? Um, but in other opinion polls where you can really read it, for example, the infratest DMAP, um, the questions are quite specific on assisted suicide, for example, and in all of the research studies, um, including our own and, for example, the study with the schedule of attitudes towards hate and death, it's a very specific wording that, that concretely and specifically um, says, you know, is it withdrawing life support or withholding life-sustaining um, measures, what we call passive uh, aid in dying, uh, or is it assisted suicide, and then it's explained what is meant by that, or is it 
termination of lifelong request. Okay, Ralf, thank you very much.